Hi everyone, my name is Lance Crandall. I am a senior program manager on the Intune and Config Manager teams. And last month I gave you a sneak peek of what's coming as far as Windows Store for Business integration into Configuration Manager for both standalone uh, agent managed devices as well as for hybrid managed devices through Intune. And today what I wanted to do was walk you through some of the enhancements that we've made for the new 1605 technical preview. Now, in the 1604 technical preview, I posted a video on YouTube that the link to that is in the description for this video that walks you through the feature as it, as it stands, as well as uh, the prereqs that you need to set up. So you need to go to Azure, Azure Active Directory. You need to create an application, get the client ID and client secret key from that application, as well as go over to the Windows Store for Business portal itself and add SCCM as a management tool. And at that point, you'll come to SCCM and you'll actually see this wizard here. Now, in this wizard, this is how you onboard SCCM or uh, Windows Store for Business into SCCM. Now, you go under Administration, Cloud Services, and Windows Store for Business and click Add Windows Store for Business Account. On this page, I'm going to add my tenant that I have, the client ID, and the client secret key that I got from Azure Active Directory and click Verify. Now, I've obviously already, already clicked Verify here and it was successfully verified. In addition, I'm going to specify a path for where offline content can get downloaded from Windows Store for Business uh, so that Configuration Manager can use it. Now, one of the new features that we've added in the 1605 technical preview here is the ability to sync down specific uh, languages from Windows Store for Business. And the benefit of having these languages sync down is that when you create applications from the licensed data that we sync from Windows Store for Business, now you'll be able to automatically add these licenses, uh, the descriptions from um, to the app models that get created. And that way uh, in the application catalog, your uh, end users will be able to see the languages uh, appropriate to them based on the operating system. Now this makes the assumption that the languages that you, uh, that are available for the application are able to be synced down. We also have the ability to set a default kind of a fallback language here. If um, a user, for example, might have Chinese on their operating system, they go to the application portal and the uh, application in question wasn't translated into Chinese, it will fall back to whatever fallback language you selected here, assuming that language is also available. So I'm just going to stick with English for now. I'll click next, walk through the wizard, the rest of the wizard here. And you can see now that we've added a couple of new columns here that will talk about the sync status. Now, again, as I mentioned in the last video, um, it takes a few minutes to sync things down. So we'll sync up in a minute after um, we give this some time to do its work. All right, now, as you can see, if we look at our Windows Store for Business account, we'll see that the last sync status was succeeded and we can see the last time that it synced and the last, last successful sync time. So in this technical preview release, uh, automatic syncs will occur in the background every 24 hours. So just be aware of that. If you add a new application and wanna see it sync down, uh, at this point you'll need to wait for the 24 hours or uh, you can also restart your server or, um, or restart the cloud connection service uh, component itself and that will actually uh, kick off a sync manually as well. And that might be great for testing. Now, one other thing I want to call out here that isn't necessarily Windows Store for Business specific is that we've moved the Apple Volume Purchase Program uh, onboarding process under cloud services as well. So you can see here, there's a, I've already added a token here, but you would just be able to add a Volume Purchase Program token and uh, sync down that information as well. Now, another addition that we've made is that if you go to Software Library, you'll see we have this license information for store apps node that I showed in the 1604 technical preview video. But now what you'll see is that since I've onboarded uh, both the Apple volume purchase program as well as Windows Store for Business, I see both sets of application uh, license information in this same view here. So let's say I wanted to go in and create uh, an application for Adobe uh, Acrobat Reader, which is an iOS application. So what I would do is highlight the application, come to the top here and click create application. Click next in the wizard that appears, and you'll see this is this is similar to the application creation wizard that you're used to for any other application that uh, that you've created in the past. Here I can edit information about the application, and click next, finish the wizard, and at this point you can see that the app model for the Apple VPP app got created successfully. So I can go to the applications node 
and deploy this application just like any other application that I have. So in this technical preview, I can create applications for Windows Store for business apps as well, whether that's online or offline. However, uh, the deployment piece is something that, that is coming in a future release. So at this point, for this technical preview, it's just the ability to create these apps. So for example, I'm going to come in, find a Windows Store for Business app uh, application here, and we'll say Create Application. We'll click Next. And under the covers, this is going to import various pieces of information, like all the different uh, apps that might be a part of this particular bundle. It's going to get the content location path, et cetera. I can obviously edit that information. And we'll complete the wizard. And if we go under applications, we'll now see the app that we just created for Sway. And it looks just like any other application that you're used to in this particular view. So we'll look at the properties here. You can see it's created a bunch of uh, appropriate deployment types for me already based on what it found in the package that it downloaded. I can look at the application catalog tab and I can see that the selected language was English. Again, that was the only one that I had selected. Uh, this is the localized description here. If I had downloaded or if I had selected during the onboarding process any other languages and those languages were part of this package, then I would also be able to look through each of the, the individual localized descriptions for, uh, for those particular languages as well. So that's a walkthrough of what we've added for the 1605 technical preview. Again, we're adding more features as, as we continue to progress through the uh, development of this feature. So if you have any feedback, feel free to let us know. And thanks for watching.